The product life, different metals for different components. That more delicate, the more, sen no, the, the more heat stressed central area in there could be with thin walled stainless. It isn't going to be, uh, Hugh McLaughlin talks about these in, in this stuff. The, part, the heating that goes down inside this chamber, which is inside here, this has been used several times. It didn't even burn off the paint from the outside on this, this first time through. It will eventually come off from it. Did burn it off from the, from the inside. This unit here, um, the pyrolysis that goes through is only at 455, 650 centigrade. This is not the raging fire that's up at the top. It's a relatively mild fire in comparison to the capacities of metals to withstand it. It does not make this chamber glow red hot. You get to the bottom and you let that air, primary air, come in with full force and stuff, you can make that whole thing glow red hot, the metal on the, on the bottom, and it will shorten the life of the, of the stove. I've been saying for years, take the char out, dump it out and, and lift it out. So we've got that way, we, and instead of dumping it, now we have the uh, the the T-char unit over here as to how that how that can be handled. All right, the uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. I expect most parts to last more than two years, and the expendable parts are easily replaced. Appropriate decentralized mass production into almost every country. It is basically relatively simple metal work. We're trying to simplify it down. And in the T-char ca category, I'm talking about flat packs. How many stoves are on this table up here? Six. Because this represents approximately three stoves, OK? Three stoves, very similar to this one. This one here, and that can? That is for powdered milk, sold in Central America. I paid a lot of money, and I gave away the milk because I wanted the can, OK? All right? The tin can company, the tin can company makes 40,000 of those cans with each order from one of the major dairies which is down in there, and they do that order every three to, three to four months, OK? That company happens to be in Costa Rica. Tin can companies are all around the world. You can get something like that, and this will work wonderfully into here and will make, make the T-char thing work. And this is, now, this is simple metal. I bought flashing, 10, 12 centimeter, 12 inch uh, strips. Metal comes in four by eight sheets. The world is still in foot, in feet, in terms of metal, metal dimensions. You get four of those strips along there. You cut them into here. Now, this is very flimsy metal, but seems to work OK on the very top. It's galvanized. It's going to hold. We can strengthen this up. There's a number of different ways of strengthening it. Again, the engineers put some engineering into these things. You can solve these problems. I'm not an engineer. I'm just an advocate and an enthusiast for a particular type of stove. So they can be, re they can be uh, uh, made stronger. This plate that's down into here probably should not be of the same thin metal. It should be a, a more substantial, a thicker gauge something. This is probably 30 gauge. Uh, uh, and, the, uh, and you could be down into like uh, 24, 22 gauge. If you want really heavy, you can, get, you can get steel plate, all right? You make it as, as, strong, as, you, as strong as you'd like into there. So the... Uh, the um, uh, expect, expect some of the parts will last longer. Flat, I was talking about, yes, the flat pack idea. That means that you don't have distribution costs. You have greatly reduced your distribution costs. I do not advocate making these pieces, cutting them out in North America or Europe or someplace, and then shipping them down to some, somewhere else. All you need is to get the metal there. I mean, I'm thinking in the country of Haiti. And Haiti doesn't, uh, has no steel mills, OK? They do allow importation of flat metal. They're less inclined to let you import something that's all been prefabricated. If you can make it in Haiti and put the people to work doing it, then that's the way to go with it. Modify it and stuff like that. I'm involved with a uh, university 
uh, group that, of engineering students uh, going to Haiti. We're going down in, in March. How many of you have Haiti interests? One, two, three, several, okay. We're gonna bring this stuff down in there. We've got some people that are, that are interested in manufacturing the stoves. Uh, the USAID has a big project coming on, I mean, $10 million or something like that. Uh, and, and we want to be part of that as part of the supply line and things, and this thing will work. And we're not going to deforest more of Haiti. We're going to use corn cobs and things like that as the fuel that makes the charcoal, that lets them cook, and la, 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 okay. Car I didn't even mention, there's carbon credits. Maybe you get $10, $20 value per T-LUD stove per year. I mean, go through the numbers and it's all hokey pokey. It depends on whether it's, what the, whether the rate is $18 or $5 per, per uh, ton or whatever the amounts are, okay? We can go through those numbers, all right? And they always come, if they will actually pay for it, if it actually comes out, you can almost finance these programs on that basis. They should be able to finance these programs on the basis of the health improvement that the government doesn't have to pay for their citizens and so that, but they don't do that, unfortunately, okay? We should, and this is uh, part of the, the, the story in there. So this is sufficient to, to finance it there. Expectations. I expect small fans for better air control. This is what's coming. It's in the future. Hey, we've got nine years before 2020, folks. Okay? In those nine years, we are going to see very nice forced air units which will run into there. TEG is thermal electric generator. This, they're a, uh, for electrical support, they only need a small wattage amount. Specialty models for specific fuels and conditions such as rice husk tea luds. Uh, you see what's up there? This is already done. It's not what we're going to do. It's already done. Yeah, Mark had a picture of it in his slideshow last night. Yeah, but why can't we get some of this stuff out there? I mean, the Bolonio stuff with regard to rice husk things, what Paul Olivier is doing in Vietnam, following on with that, and the different foot draggings of different types of stuff. I mean, there's only so much that the few tea lutters are actually able to do. We need. Oh, you, you think that uh, Peter Scott was recruiting. I'm recruiting, okay. <laughs> Is Peter here? Okay, he, we already have a deal. I told him, Peter, I'm on your team, and you're on mine, okay? <laughs> and he looked, and, and he, uh, you know, he, he smiled. He seemed to be happy with it. We gotta get, negotiate something. I want tea lud stoves made in Peter's factory there, over there, there's no proprietary interests at all on t -LED technology. We have to struggle to find out how is somebody going to make any money off of this. Well, I think Peter knows how to make some money off of these. I hope he does. And the other stuff they're going to produce. Somebody makes money. Somebody makes money off of fuel. Somebody makes money off of the stoves, the production and that. Okay? And uh, so this is, what we're, this is what we're after. So this is already done and it will be done better and more widely disseminated by 2020. I don't think 30 million is that hard of a thing to do. I want to see literally millions, millions of existing charcoal stoves have something like that added on to it for three or four dollars and be able to not burn traditionally made charcoal, but put in biomass chunky pieces, which makes it in the end pyro through pyrolysis gives you the charcoal so that you can then burn it or you can use it as biochar. This isn't hard. This isn't big money, but we've got to get on with it. Acceptance. What about acceptance of tea lud stoves? I, I went through before some of these issues about convenience, okay? Ask Krista Roth about Malawi. We've got, and this is uh, uh, the TILAs, the T-CHARs, et cetera. Uganda, ask Karsten. The project is ongoing. He has, it's a World Bank study that's over there. Uh, Central America, Art Donnelly, and I was just down there with him. We're doing things with the microgasifier stoves, little variations. Indonesia, Mr. Nahuda, I've never met him, but I got information that came up. Oh, there's a several thousands of these stoves and people are wanting a stove is like eight or nine dollars. 
how do we get to these people? I don't even, can't even get email contact with some, I mean, I have little bits of stuff. I am looking for assistance for making these things happen. And like I said, I'm recruiting. I want you to take on all this kind of stuff. Oh, by the way, I'm 68 years old, okay? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, okay, 60, all right. And this is for everybody else out into there. I go around, I, I went to these students over at the University of Illinois, and they're, 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 they're 24, and you know, they're, the oldest one was 24, yeah. And I said, 40 years from now, if you get into this stuff like that, the world will be very different with regard to stoves and things like that. This is a career opportunity for the younger ones. And I can run through the people who are in their 80s and the 70s and the 60s, and we're down just a few, few people. And there's lots of room out in there for, uh, for people to do this stuff. Um, uh, larger studies are needed. Krista, if we had to summarize all of the money that has ever been allocated for doing the types of stuff they're doing, not counting the British Petroleum stuff, they did their multi-millions, okay? They poured it into that one, okay? We, it's, it's, the, the term peanuts comes to mind, okay? Minuscule amounts. So we've got little studies, it's been a long time coming. Yet to come, applications for larger systems. Tomorrow's presentation, I won't take the time for that now. We're talking about barrels 23 inches in diameter, making biochar in quantity. But the, the nice one, the main, main thing that you want to see, a dairy in Uganda pasteurizes its milk and makes yogurt and for cheese and stuff like that using tea luds as the heat source to replace the charcoal that they were having in there. It exists. It is real, okay? One case. All right, one case. Uh, reaching the developed world, when, yet to come, when the tea luds reach here, when affluent societies face the issues of fossil fuels, current difficulties with renewable dry biomass fuels and stoves will disappear because we will solve our problems because we've identified it as a problem. Part of my stump speech, no, I don't do this, okay. We get all these guys, the, the politicians, ah, yes. You go to help the politicians understand this. I'm waiting for the first one to do this, okay? They get up there, whatever political party says, I am in favor of renewable energy, wind, solar, biofuels, of course, uh, that's the liquid kind. Silence. <laughs> they never say, and dry biomass that could heat. 40% of America's homes in certain areas and stuff like that, a heating arrangement that goes along with this. They never even acknowledge the existence of the dry biomass. They're acknowledged in some reports, but never by a politician. Never once heard a politician put dry biomass into the category of renewable energies which are uh, available for America in America's situation. So uh, there is a, a uh, um, like I said, I'm in, involved in Chip Energy. Chip Energy does heating units, and we're uh, uh, 200,000 200, BTUs, et cetera. OK, uh, flexib uh, culturally flexible designs. I'm almost done, almost done. I estimate that only 20% of what can be known about TLUD technology is currently known. 20%. I estimate that for rocket technology, it's 80%. I'm not going to say you got 99% of it. No, there's more to learn about it, yes. But we are scratching the surface. Say I'm wrong, and it's really 30% or 40%. Just think about, or maybe it's 10%. How much are we going to make in progress on this in your lifetime? And you can be involved, or you can sit back and watch. <laughs>